Thank you for their testimony today. As has been mentioned, and we all know, um, it's been over a year since the COVID pandemic began posing significant health and economic challenges. In uh, my district and in downstate Illinois, we've been dealt with the one-size-fits-all closure mandates from our state government, forcing many small businesses to permanently close and people to lose their jobs. However, thanks to Operation Warp Speed and the private sector coordination and innovation, vaccines have been, uh, been, are becoming increasingly widely available across the country. Despite this development, many states are still mandating pandemic-related regulations forcing middle-class business owners to foot the bill to stay open and comply. And I've seen that throughout my district in downstate Illinois. Once these mandates are safely lifted, Main Street businesses and families can finally start to recover. And yet, while the last year has been one of the most financially challenging for job creators and families in my, in, in my lifetime, today we are discussing job-killing tax hikes, tax hikes on these same groups. To that point, as Ranking Member Smith mentioned, the Joint uh, Committee on Taxation recently released a government analysis which illustrates that the U.S. tax system is already highly progressive, with those making more than $1 million a year paying an average tax rate of 31.5%, compared to those making between $20,000 and $30,000 a year paying an average tax rate of 3.1%. In addition, I want to take time to focus on how these proposed tax policies, raising taxes on operations by imposing higher business tax rates, doubling the tax on the sale of business through the capital gains rate, and creating a new double death tax through repealing the stepped up basis will negatively affect small businesses and a large population of family businesses in my district, particularly family farms. My district is the uh, eighth largest ag district in the country, and has many uh, family farms. There are more than four times as many farmers and ranchers aged 65 and older as there are those under the age of 35. And these individuals own more than 40% of agricultural land in the United States, meaning it is expected that more than 370 million acres are expected to change hands in the next two decades. Repealing the stepped up basis hinders the ability to transfer agriculture land to family owned operations and creates massive administrative burdens on families. These policies will force families that may, may have just lost a loved one to, pro to properly value appreciation of assets such as farmland and manufacturing equipment to determine their tax liability. On top of that, this proposal would increase a state tax from 40 to 45% an additional tax liability at the time of death. Mr. Edwards, my question for you, if these proposals are enacted into law, how does a family farm pass along the farm to the next generation if they're forced to sell off the assets to pay an enormous tax bill? What's the policy, what's the policy advantage there? Yeah, the, uh, thanks for the question. You know, the uh, what it seems to me, if you're like most Americans and you're not wealthy, like I'm not wealthy, you want wealthy people to keep their wealth invested in businesses because businesses hire people and produce output for the economy. When people withdraw money from their businesses and consume it, that's when you want to tax them. So, you know, that's why I think, you know, higher capital gains taxes, higher state taxes are really problematic. We want businesses to keep producing and generating jobs for all of us. As I said, you know, wealth and workers are complements. They're not, they're not antagonistic to each other. I think we ought to have policies that encourage wealth building. Uh, and, and I think that ultimately benefits all of us. Well, thanks for that. Um, and as we talk about how we fund the nation's infrastructure, as we've talked about today, um, let me ask you, Mr. Edwards, how is it effective to change longstanding tax policy on family uh, farms and family-owned businesses to pay for that cost? Uh, that doesn't uh, make any sense to me. I mean, I, I, I talked in my testimony, my written testimony, that you know, most infrastructure in America is owned by the private sector. In fact, 65 percent of all U.S. infrastructure is private. You know, pipelines and broadband and cell towers, it's all private. If you raise the corporate tax rate, you get less investment in private sector infrastructure. So the funding of the president's job plan by raising the corporate tax doesn't make any sense because, you know, he would increase subsidies for infrastructure within the corporate tax hike. You know, it would reduce investment in infrastructure 
So it's really a contradictory policy. Thanks for that. I yield back. 